The Winnipeg Jets continue a big road streak with uh, another couple of wins against the Central Division, defeating the Nashville Predators and the Dallas Stars, both in very different fashions. We'll talk about which Jets are the real ones on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Evening, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, though, we just love and appreciate your support. Like I said at the top of the episode, the Jets have now faced both Dallas and Nashville and come out with with two pretty big wins, but I'd say both of them happened in very different ways, and one of them, you'd probably argue, was more than a little bit fortunate, right? Hellebuck put on an absolutely sterling performance against uh, the Nashville Predators, while the Jets themselves were not so good. And then the Stars game happened, and you know what? The Jets actually played pretty well in that one. A 3-0 shutout for Bressois, and Winnipeg showed that it can disrupt the neutral zone and make life really difficult for a team like Dallas that lives off of rapid counters. So we'll break those games down and kind of go into um, some major takeaways, maybe some things uh, for, for you know future concern, and trying to figure out which team we saw over the last couple of games is really who the Jets are, right? Is it the Preds team or is it the Dallas Stars team? You know, which Jets are going to show up here as Winnipeg approaches the playoffs, which are starting next week, if you can believe it, really close. Um, And uh, yeah, I think we're all trying to get a handle on this team. Before we dive into all of that, though, just wanted to let you know that tonight's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed knows that when you're uh, growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash LockedOn to start hiring right now. <clears throat> Terms and conditions do apply. Now, like I said, you know, let's start off with the uh, the game against Nashville. So Winnipeg went with the typical um, Ehlers, Shifley, and Velarde combo that they've used in the past couple of games. And that line, frankly, got killed. Uh, they were bad. This was one of those games where that line just didn't really have it. But honestly, it was one of pretty much every line that just didn't have it. All the line combos were poor. Winnipeg uh, looked outmatched and outpaced in terms of being outworked. You you could see it on the ice very clearly. The Jets just weren't all that good. Nashville was swarming and trying to force uh, turnovers in the corners. They seized upon bad passes from the Jets. There were moments where Winnipeg individually on on certain defensive uh, back checks and stuff got horribly embarrassed. I think we all saw Neil Pionk have a couple of really bad gaffes. And just in general, you know, the Jets did not play particularly great hockey. And so Bones did what Bones usually does and went back to his old line combos, which you you pretty much know what happened after that. Connor, Shifley, and Filardi, and uh, of course, Ehlers, Monahan, and I think Defoli at one point. So yeah, I mean, it is what it is. He sort of knew <clears throat> it was only a matter of time before he would do this. I think the question was just when it was going to happen. And interestingly, uh, somebody pointed out that when Ehlers, Shifley, and Velarde played together, they almost never got offensive zone starts. Comparatively speaking, from when Connor, Connor Shifley, and Velarde play, Ehlers, Shifley, and Velarde never got the same uh, same uh, you know defend or offensive zone deployments, which means they had so much more work to do. And it sounds, you know, in so many words, uh, somebody, uh, Garrett Hole suggested maybe, you know, Bones was trying to make this actively more difficult for the line. And I think that kind of tracks to me, uh, not that I'm trying to be a conspiracy theorist, but I feel like with this team and how Bones has basically been a little bit stubborn with his line combos and has kind of said, this is how it's going to be. And if you can't play along with it, you're not going to play. And I think we kind of have seen that. And I think, you know, he tried to actively find reasons to break up that top line, which is really a shame because Ehlers, Shifley, and Velarde gives you so much more flexibility with the rest of the team. But it is what it is. 
Winnipeg ended up getting shelled for most of the rest of the game. The only saving grace was that at the end of it, they ended up winning in overtime. This one on a uh, an overtime winner, thanks to Shifley, Connor, and Pionk, which is really funny because those three had among the worst evenings for most of Winnipeg's players. Um, and of course, I mean, there weren't really many standouts. I think the only person who could really hang his hat on having had a good night was Connor Hellebuck. He was in Vesna form, and I think you kind of know that when he's on his game, he is almost unbeatable, which I guess heading into the playoffs is a little bit of a confidence boost, right? Even if the Jets are playing like garbage, at least he is a guy that you can still uh, rely upon to be the guy. Um, otherwise, you know, the Jets had some individually really cool goals on the power play. Uh, I know that Shifley had like a three point night, but I think we also know that in terms of his actual matchups and whether he won them or not. Yeah, it kind of came down to individual skill, uh, being what carried the Jets through. Velarde had a phenomenal power play goal down low, amazing stick handling, beautiful deeks, and, uh, ended up potting one that's probably going to be on his own personal highlight reel. Shifley had another great deke, uh, a great goal that was a, a, a brilliant individual effort, which, you know, given how the rest of the game went for him, probably, um, <laughs> I guess, a little bit fortunate in some ways. But, I mean, he does have that ability to be a game breaker when he wants to be. It's just he's got to actually get out of the defensive zone to really make the most of it. And that, that's kind of where I think that line in particular has really gone wrong uh, throughout multiple points of this year. But, you know, I think my big concern was heading into the game against the Stars. If these line combinations hold, you know, are the Jets going to be okay, right? Which version is going to show up? Because it's been hard to really get a read on this team when you force Connor into that top line role. When you go away from it, the Jets have a lot more balance, and I think it makes it a lot easier to sort of game plan because you're not having to worry so much about the top six being submerged. Now, this Preds game, they were legitimately awful, and there's no getting around that. But I think the bigger concern is... This was like one of the first times that they've really struggled and Bones immediately went back to combos that were typically even worse. Um, those those trios have traditionally just not worked well. And then we also saw that Perfetti basically didn't play in the third period. Ehlers really didn't play all that much. It's just, uh, you know, it's frustrating because we keep doing a lot of the same things and having the same conversations. And it really suggests to me that Bones... Uh, which is something that a lot of Stars fans said, it's that he's kind of stuck in his ways. If he has an idea about how something should be, it is very hard to change that concept for him. And sometimes what he sees and what he feels about the team probably doesn't align with what a lot of us are seeing and maybe getting uh, stats reports on. And I'm not saying that, you know, the numbers are going to tell you every single aspect of this team, but I can tell you one thing. They have painted a pretty grim picture for that top line, generally speaking. And unless something really drastic shifts over the next few weeks, I worry that that's going to be a real problem heading into the postseason. You know, if the Jets have to face off against one of Dallas or Nashville or Colorado in a seven-game series, do I trust that top line to survive all those games? Mm, I, I got to be honest, it's going to be a really close one. And I think muddying the picture even more was how that top line did in this game against the Dallas Stars, which, you know, generally speaking, pretty strong game from most of the team. Even the top line was uh, at or just above break even, which is pretty rare. Uh, usually you see them get buried in, in uh, expected goal share, but for once they seemingly kept up and looked pretty good against a, you know, a strong, fast Dallas team that has traditionally give this, given this Jets squad absolute fits. We've been... Um, 0-3 in this series so far, and this was Winnipeg's first win to avoid the season sweep. So, you know, some positives and some things to really dive into. And again, we, we still have this overarching question of whether or not, you know, the, the Preds Jets were the real ones, or is it the Stars Jets that we saw uh, tonight? We'll get into that in just a little bit. Before we go any further, though, I did want to shout out our friends and partners at Factor Meals. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready-to-eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, Vegan, and Veggie. You can also discover more than 60 add-ons every week, including breakfast, on-the-go, lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. You also have tons of different options, whether you're looking for stuff that has premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, asparagus, and so many other delicious flavors. 
again, there's no fuss. There's no prep. All you have to do is simply heat it up and savor the delicious food. And because uh, Factor is celebrating Earth Day all month long, be sure to look out for the Earth Month Eats badge on the menu for their lowest carbon footprint meals. If you're ready to get started with Factor, head to factormeals.com slash LockedOnNHL50 and use code LockedOnNHL50 to get 50% off your first order plus 20% off your next box. That's code LockedOnNHL50 at factormeals.com slash LockedOnNHL50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us as we are just uh, finishing up, you know, from a, a big Jets win in Dallas against a very difficult Stars team that has honestly embarrassed the Jets a lot more this year than I ever expected. Uh, Winnipeg does not play well against Dallas. It's been a, a big problem this year, even in the games where the Jets were close uh, Winnipeg, you know, special teams kind of was the decider in the early games. And then in the later games, uh, I mean, again, there's only been four of them total, but you know, in the third game, the jets basically just got embarrassed out, out and out by the stars. It was really awful to watch. And so it was hard to know what you, you would get in this game where you had Connor Shifley and Velarde back together, which was already a little bit disconcerting. Then you had Perfetti scratched. And, uh, I think it's, Basically, uh, Logan Stanley on the third pairing now. That appears to have been a change that Bones has stuck with the last few games. I guess he's now considered better than Schmidt and uh, Miller, which is interesting to me. Uh, not sure I, I necessarily agree with that assessment, but I will say one thing. I do think he is probably on par or maybe even better than Neil Pionk. That's how rough Pionk's season has been this year. Tough to see Neil really struggle like this, but... All of that kind of coming into this game against the Stars had me sort of on edge. You know, I wasn't really sure what I was going to, you know, open up and find in this game. And instead, Winnipeg played what I would say is a pretty textbook way to disrupt Dallas's entire forecheck and shut down a lot of their transition game. You make it really difficult on zone entries. You essentially clog up the middle of the ice and you give Dallas very little time and space to actually make plays. And suddenly the Stars offense starts to dry up. They're not a team that's actually as aggressive um, and physical as they used to be. There there was a, a time when they were really gritty and grindy. That's not the way that they play nowadays. And if you force them into something like that, which is more akin to how Bones likes to play, I think the Jets actually have an advantage there. And they showed it off in this game where we saw some really good play uh, from most of the team. Before we dive into some of the specifics and some things that I liked and some things that perhaps weren't as ideal, just wanted to let you know something really cool uh, and a great alternative for those of you who listen to Fox Sports or ESPN or watch it on TV all day. If you find yourself having to turn down the volume because there's tons of shouting, maybe you should make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Uh, you... You, of course, can be sure to follow and like and subscribe to Locked On Sports Today on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. Locked On Sports Today, part of the Locked On Sports, uh, Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, like I said, obviously the Jets uh, had a pretty complete game against the Stars. We had some really good contributions from up and down the lineup. Uh, we even had a David Gustafson goal, which there's one Jets fan on Twitter who probably absolutely exploded seeing that, but we also had a great Nikolai Ehlers goal and Mark Shifley capped the evening off with a uh, an empty netter. And this was kind of a big win because it keeps the Jets technically alive in the race for the Central Division. I don't know if they're uh, actually out of it yet, but if they if they had lost to the, the to the Stars, I believe it clinched the division. So um, a big win for a couple of reasons. I think for the first time this team showed that it can actually shut down the, the way that the Stars like to play. Dallas is a team that can kill you off rush counters, and the Jets really didn't give the Stars too, too much to work with. That's not to say that they completely eliminated them. No, not at all. Dallas still had a number of really tough chances, and Bersois was definitely tested on a couple of key saves. But generally speaking, compared to what we've seen in other games, I thought this was probably one of Winnipeg's most well-rounded performances uh, against the Stars team and really against a playoff opponent um, in some time. So a big game, and I think you, you had really strong play for most lines. The fourth line, eh, not so much, but 
you know, it's one of those rare nights where defensively they really struggled and had some issues getting out of their own end. But against Dallas, you kind of sort of expect that. So uh, if the trade-off is that the top nine ends up playing pretty well, I really don't care. I think that's all I've ever really wanted is a top nine that's functional and generally is is at or above break even, right? If the first line was like a 50-50 and expected goal share, I would honestly not really complain. Like that's all I want from this top line is to be halfway decent. If they can at least do that and be okay while the rest of the team does pretty well and wins their minutes, I don't really have that much to complain about. Is it ideal? No. But I would take it compared to watching the first line get shelled in far too many of the games that they've been together. So um, overall, right, I think this was an encouraging performance. I guess the the caution that I have here is that, you know, Dallas to me looks slower and not as effective. And while Winnipeg did a really good job of clogging up uh, zone entries and stuff and limiting the amount of danger the Stars were able to create, Dallas still had a couple of really good looks. And the Jets were also uh, given a, a fair few penalties, which could be a problem you know, if you face them again in the playoffs. Now, obviously, power plays are called less frequently in the postseason, or power plays are awarded less frequently in the postseason, but that still doesn't make me feel 100% comfortable. If the power play continues to be a huge advantage for the Stars in those key moments when, you know, it might be a close 3-2 or 2-2 game or something, that could be what separates these teams. But I guess, you know, the, the positive is that Hellebuck and Bersois have been really brilliant in these last two games. And, you know, if, if they can continue to do this during the postseason run, the Jets are probably feeling pretty confident, at least against, you know, some of the first couple of rounds. I don't know how this team is going to look after, you know, even if they get through, say, Colorado or Dallas or maybe both teams somehow, you know, what they're going to look like if they were to make the conference finals, right? You know, the Pacific Division is definitely not going to be as tough by that point. But by the same token, if you somehow come up against a, a Vegas or something or a, a really pesky Kings team, are you going to have the legs to keep going? Having so many tough and brutal opponents right in the first uh, couple of weeks of this playoff run, it could be a bit of a, a downer for the Jets. But we'll see, right? Going to give the team at least a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. Uh, not that they have necessarily earned it, but, you know, some days you just kind of have to go along with the ride. And I think that's kind of where I am with the team right now is that, you know, for all of the team's flaws and stuff, there's just some stuff that I have to sort of accept is going to be a problem and will probably keep happening. And until the coaching staff has changed over, we'll probably just keep seeing it being in a, a bit of an issue. But I mean, it is what it is. My hope is that, you know, the whole Cole Perfetti scratching is not something that stays. Uh, Perfetti really shouldn't ever be sitting. I, I was shocked that he sat in this game uh, against a, a playoff caliber opponent. And like, I know that he didn't have a great game in, in Nashville, but like no one did, right? Everyone was kind of dog crap. And I, I really am kind of upset that Perfetti had such a good run for the past several weeks and then gets benched for, you know, some some guys, you know, I, I'm not going to say that David Gustafson or some of the others didn't deserve to play, but like we're talking about trying to find a playoff lineup ahead of the final couple of games of the season. And if you're already scratching players like Perfetti when you're about to enter the playoffs, you're sending a clear signal about who you think is on this postseason squad. And if Perfetti is not in it, I, I really feel like that is a huge mistake. Cole should absolutely be starting. He should be played with skill. And I, I continue to not really understand why Bones does not like him. Um, and it's getting to a point where I'm actually worried longer term about his relationship with the team. The more that Bones kind of alienates him and alien, alienates Ehlers, it could be a huge problem when their contracts are up. Something to keep an eye on. Uh, let's just hope that it's not going to be as big of an issue and that maybe I'm exaggerating the problem, but I got to be honest, uh, you know, I'm thinking past this season and next and I have a lot of concerns about some of the deployments and how that's going to factor in to future negotiations. So a lot to consider, but you know, for now, let's just hope that the Jets have a good playoff run because maybe doing that will kind of, you know, ease all concerns and folks will still want to stick around. But in the meantime, you know, I, I think the biggest question is which of these Jets are the real Jets, right? Is it the one that got smacked by Nashville? Is it the team that basically controlled the game against the Stars? Is it neither? Is it both? Really hard to say, and we'll try and tackle this question in just a moment. Before we go too much further, though, I did want to shout out our friends and partners at Indeed. When you're drafting your fa uh, fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team, too? 
If you're building your talented roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the only hiring pl platform where you attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills. Get them to be matched to you instead. Indeed helps you find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. And they also have an instant match that can find some of the top candidates matching exactly what you need for your qualifications extremely quickly. And if you hate waiting, Indeed's U.S. data shows that over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. As somebody who has actually used Indeed myself, when I was looking for work, I can personally attest to how convenient it is. It's very comprehensive. They make it a breeze for you know folks looking for work. And so for people who are actually looking to hire, I can only imagine it is as convenient as it gets. So Indeed knows that when you're growing your own business, you have to make all of those dollar, dollars count. And that's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring right now. Again, that is Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hello, friends, and welcome back to these closing thoughts on tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we are just wrapping up with some final thoughts from Winnipeg versus uh, Dallas and Nashville. And I think there's there's been a bit of a question about what kind of team this Jets squad is. Is it the team that played tonight or was it the team that struggled against Nashville a few games ago? And I think it can actually be both in some respects. I want to be, you know, Gosh, um, I want to be optimistic, right? I want to say that, like, you know, for for the Jets, it, it's it's clear that they can play at the level of the the, the Stars game. But I'm just, I don't know. I I'm suspicious that they're going to continue to do it and execute this way of shutting down the neutral zone and and really clogging stuff up on a routine basis, right? I I, I have to say that, like, for the Jets, it's been inconsistent at best. And I think that's where I really struggle with this team is that there are moments where they play brilliant hockey, but then you'll also see some of these line combos really struggle. And I, I feel like while the Stars game serves as a great template, I'm not sure if the Jets are able to keep doing it on a routine basis. You know, for, for me, I see this team in a very flawed but talented state. And I think when, you know, the line combos are actually rearranged to what you might call optimal, um, this team can be one of the best in the league, but as it is right now, the, the lineups that they're rolling with, I feel like the, the Jets are kind of in a spot where, I don't know, I I think they might win a couple of games against, say, Dallas or Colorado in the postseason, but then you start getting into game six, game seven, where those late game adjustments really have all the impact and make the difference, and I'm not really sure that the Jets are capable of doing that. It's not that I'm I'm going to say that they're going to get swept or, or eliminated early, but I feel like I'm just suspicious of the squad's ability to sort of adjust and, and have that in-game feel to what maybe Dallas or Colorado does. And that's assuming that Winnipeg even plays one of them, right? They're going to have to face at least one of these squads, uh, but I, I just don't know which, which yet at this point. Uh, I, I suspect, um, you know, it's probably going to be Colorado because I think with the Stars having a pretty good hold on first, unless something really changes, uh, it, it'll probably be the Avs. And at this point, it's just a question of, will it be at home or away for the Jets? And hopefully they start the series off at home. Canada Life Center is a big advantage to have. And if the crowd is rollicking and rolling and everyone's excited and bought in, should be a good start to the series. But again, like I said, I just have some questions about how this team is going to perform in the postseason and even with some of these wins against the Central, I I can't help but feel like a seven-game series is going to feel a little bit differently as, say, DeBoer or, uh, um, gosh, I don't know what, Bednar, you know, kind of adapts to what uh, Bones does, right? Rick's going to have a pretty stubborn and pretty consistent vision, and if you don't like it, well, kind of tough luck, right? He's going to stick to it, and I think that has been uh, a pretty clear and consistent message from him and the rest of the coaching staff. Whether I agree with that message or not, you know, it's kind of irrelevant. I, I think he's pretty fixed and pretty set in his ways, and so at the end of the day, you know, as much as I would love to say that the Stars team is the one that's the, the, the real Jets, I kind of tend to see Nashville as maybe being more of what I'm expecting, right? I think the Jets will have some games early in the playoffs where they might look like they did against Dallas, 
But as these teams start to adapt and start to make adjustments and maybe some uh, pressure tweaks and stuff on how they forecheck and how they make their zone entries, I feel like the Jets are going to struggle to keep up. Uh, and it also will kind of rely on what happens with Pionk. Pionk is unfortunately a bit of an X factor and probably not the kind that you really want to uh, be thinking about. But I mean, at this point, you know, you're sort of ride or die with what you've got. And I think the Jets have pretty clearly suggested who they trust to ride or die with. Again, like I said, whether you like it or not, there's a couple of guys that are going to be on the outside looking in. And uh, I can't say I'm feeling great about it. But uh, hey, there is one slightly positive thing. It sounds right now uh, like Michigan is is pretty much out of the uh, out of the frozen four. They're apparently down like four nothing last I heard. Which, if that's the case, maybe McCrory can come in and offer some uh, fourth line support or something. We'll see. Probably not playing a minute for the Jets this year. But hey, if he were to happen to get a uh, an NHL debut or something, maybe alongside Brad Lambert, I think we'd all enjoy that heading into the playoffs. I'd like at least some more positive vibes and, and the ability to trust this team heading into the postseason. But until they show that they can keep playing like they did against Dallas on a more consistent basis, and we only have like two or three games left to even see that, I, you know, it's just hard to really get excited, right? I, I want to be cautiously optimistic, but I, I need to see a little more. And I think the game against Colorado this weekend will go a long way to giving me um, either a more confident feel in this team or even more concern. I don't know where I'm at yet with the squad. Uh, it's crazy that we're kind of at the end of the season and we're still seeing the Jets not really firmed up their lineup. I think that is wild. It's concerning that Bones keeps making these adjustments this late in the season, but all I hope is that whatever they do, they come across a winning combo. Like, I'm not asking for perfection. I just want a team that's watchable, that's fun, and that can give us as close to a deep run as possible. Even if they get bounced in the first round, but they play really good hockey, I can accept that. I just can't accept watching this team struggle the way it has the last few years. That is what I don't want to see, and that is what I'm concerned we will see. So let me know how you're feeling about the Jets' playoff for odds and runs. Do you think this team is equipped to go deep? Are you concerned about the coaching staff changes? Do you think maybe the Stars game is going to be the blueprint the Jets use going forward? Drop your co uh, comments and thoughts in the section below or at my social medias at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. For tonight's episode, though, that is going to be all the time that we have. I thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. Be sure to come here tomorrow for a preview of Winnipeg versus Colorado, and hopefully we get to report about a win over the weekend. But like I said, that's all the time that we have tonight. As always, have a great night, and go Jets go!